Humble Track is having a sale on their air products. 10% off air products like the air floor, the sweet spot, the launch pad, things that you can use at home or in the gym. I love the air stuff, especially the air floors. Visit Tumble Track at T U M B L T R A K tumbletrack.com. Train smart. Do you think there's any context in which anyone other than Simone would ever have a petition? onto the Olympic team accepted. So here's our, here are real life things that have happened mm-hmm. that have prevented athletes from competing besides an injury and an injury mm-hmm. that will be fine that you can't compete at trials will be fine two weeks later enough that you can keep your level up. I, I, injury mm-hmm. is kind of like, uh, you've had a death in the family. That's also happened in the middle of Olympic trials. That is a real life thing that has happened in the world. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about things in the world not to an Olympic athlete, not necessarily in the United States. Volcano eruptions, a mm-hmm. gym, your gym flooded. That has actually happened. That happened to Sean Johnson. Um, yeah, I remember the fluff pieces. Yeah, the Coke sponsored the whole bring the what? gym back to life. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Coke. Remember, the show is PG-13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. The first Paris Olympic qualifier part of the four-part World Cup series is complete. We'll tell you who's in the lead in points and who's in the lead in put me on the team because the team already qualified swagometer points. That's another (laughs) thing we're tracking. SUNY plans to make our eponymous skill dreams come true, and hopefully we'll see it at Winter Cup coming up this week. We have the Olympic selection procedure Finally, for the U.S., we have a little bit of exciting gym internet news. The craziest, hardest skill that's ever been done on beam has been done, and it wasn't done by a gymnast. We're going to discuss this. That it's invalid. (laughs) Also, um, we have some college gymnastics news for you. This is February 18th, 2024. Welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica. I'm here with Spencer from the Balance Beam Situation, where you can find all the schedules, all the links to how to watch and the scores all week long. And most importantly, the gifts. The gifts that will make you spit out your coffee when you get into work after he puts them up. Um, Spencer, what is our Winter Cup schedule for this week? No collagen cocktails this week. No collagen cocktails. It's Winter Cup week. It's elite time. So we're going to have a show Friday the 23rd after senior women's podium training. So that's like... 12 p.m. ish Eastern, 9 a.m. ish Pacific. You know, play it by ear. But that's about ish. And then again on Saturday, the 14th, live after the Winter Cup Women's Senior Competition finishes. So we're talking, and the end media finishes and all of that. So we're talking 4 30 Eastern, 1 30 Pacific ish. I'm so excited to watch Gabby Douglas this week and Sudi. Gabby Is Gabby competing? Sudi? I haven't. No, heard. I don't know if you've heard. The we Gabby hadn't talked about it. You hadn't Sunny. squealed about it. So I was. This is brand new information for me. We've been waiting for this since was it 2022? 2016. I can't remember. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But that we uh, that she was official. Well, not officially, but since we found out she was training. Okay, so Winter Cup preview. We talked about a lot of things last week. Yes. But so this is the meet is the women's competition. It's Saturday, the 24th at 1 p.m. Eastern. USAG is putting it on YouTube so you can watch that uh-huh. way. Senior men, junior women are Friday, Nastia Cup and senior men day two are on Sunday. But the most important thing happening is SUNY. So besides yeah. Gabby, it's SUNY. So we got an, <laughs> besides uh, Gabby and also Trinity. Yep. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Among and the most exciting things that have ever happened in the world. Suni Lee, late entry to the Winter Cup, sliding in at the last second to be like, also, I'm here. We got an ar- uh, article, an update from Scott Bregman at the Olympic Channel. She's competing Beeman uh, bars. I don't, did yeah. anyone on this podcast predict that Suni was going to be a last second addition and compete at Winter Cup? Was it anybody? Say- you saaved yourself. You obliquely hinted at it so that you could still go either way. Well, I'm just saying. Maybe. And I was like, are you hinting at something? And you were like, "Hmm, I don't know. 
<laughs> when you want to know what tickets to buy, you listen to Dreamcastic. Um, <laughs> so the great, the best thing is she's making our eponymous skill dreams come true because the whole reason she said she's going to go to the Baku World Cup, she's doing this so she can get an assignment so she can go to the Baku World Cup and get the full twisting Jaeger named after her. Oh, how many times have we told gymnasts, just go to a World Cup? It's so yeah. much easier. Do, go to a World Cup, oh do your skill, and then whatever. Just, like, dick around on the bars. No one cares. Do whatever you want. And then get your skill named after yourself. This is the dream. This is the plan. And Suni's finally doing it. Yes, I'm so excited. Just get up on the bar, do it, and then you can just jump off and go to sleep. You don't even have to do anything yeah. else. No, they probably would yeah. frown on that. But... <laughs> um, oh my god, I'm so excited. They, she, uh, Her coach, Jess, also said that they had considered a full twisting nabs um, as part of her mm -hmm. repertoire as well. And then we got an update on her TikTok about her dismount. So remember, we saw that she had switched her dismount to um, a back, or not, not the back handspring series, but doing a round off. So now we have seen, she put up a bunch of videos of her doing her double pike dismount off of beam from a million different angles. And obviously it's beautiful and perfect because hello, Suni. So what <laughs> does this do for her routine construction? Yeah. So if this is in her routine, which she kind of said, like, I'm not promising it yet. This is a possibility. She was very like, clear. She's not committing 100% that she's going to like do the double pike in one second. But um, this would take her realistically into the high sixes you could get her routine for, with what she showed at the most recent camp with then a double pike dismount. You can realistically get her, this to a 7 OD score by just like finagling a couple things. Tack on a split jump here, that kind of stuff. Get a 10th here and there. You could get this to a 7. You know, it doesn't, what I'm saying is it wouldn't take like YouTube edit magic where people are like i made a 10 od score bars routine and it's like oh yeah you're co you're connecting a mo salto to a <laughs> fabric nova it's fine <laughs> um yeah you don't have to get weird to get her uh to a 7 od score which would be you know right up there slash the top difficulty in the world depending on you know what we see come out of the chinese team whoever makes the olympic team um so yeah very impressive very exciting I'm waiting for someone now to do an animation of connecting a Mo Saltos to a, a <laughs> Act literally yeah. physically impossible. <laughs> yes, it is. But I, uh, animation could do it, though. That's yeah, the thing. You could. Someone posted on Twitter. I don't know who posted this, but it was like basically a Barbie doing bars. And it's like perfect bars. Like they have it's they finally learned to just motion capture. Probably the Fujitsu robot judges sold this to Barbie and licensed it. And were like, here, this is perfect yeah. bars. They Barbie finally can do it now. found someone who could do it like the drawings in the code of points. Yeah, exactly. And it's a Barbie doll. <laughs> I also love that Barbie's wearing a unitard and not a Leo because she's fashion forward, as we know. Mm -hmm. Club Gym Nerd, get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets an extra podcast every week, athlete dossiers, code guides, commission your own segments of the show. It also makes a great gift. Check it out at gymcastic.com at the Join the Club tab. Other updates. Jordan has withdrawn. Uh, Jordan Childs, shoulder tweak. Zoe Miller has withdrawn, said she has an injury. Oh, oh Zoe. We're not, we're not going to get Zoe quote machine Miller. I know. Why are we doing this? Oh, right. Suni and Gabby. And <sighs> That's right. We but get to see still. But still, it's not the same anymore. We're not going to get any bets fulfilled. I mean, maybe someone else will do it. Like, you know. Okay, so Mike, I have a question. Uh, going back to Suni. About because... what people should bet on? Yeah, I'm ready. No, not about what people should bet on. About, okay, so she said, you know, she's competing at Winter Cup in order to get the assignment to go to the Baku World Cup to get a skill name after herself. What do we think slash know she has to do in order to get that Baku assignment. Oh yeah. That's the thing. So Is it just like you had to compete and you're SUNY. Cause that's how it would be. If I were in charge, it would be like, Oh, SUNY wants to go to the Baku world cup and get this named after herself. Okay. The si assignment named. Complete. Here's a plane we're ticket. <laughs> yeah. Like, see you later. Have fun. <laughs> oh, I just signed it in an, at the air, like a check. Like that's how you give SUNY plane yeah. tickets. You create them in the air with a wand. Um, I so my understanding is you have to go to Winter Cup or this upcoming camp 
And that's where they're going to give these assignments. But then the way that Jess, her coach made it sound is she has to compete at winter cup in order mm -hmm. to get the Baku assignments, but must this be the, the official. This would qualifier. be the selection competition for Baku. I just don't know what, like the standard is. We shall see. I just like, yeah. is there something specific? Cause I, personally would like Suni to go to the Baku World Cup and perform the skill. I want to know what I should be rooting for to happen at Winter Cup in order for that to happen. And is it just Suni showing up and saying hello? Because I'm fine rooting for that. Oh, you would like oh, actual criteria Done. for that? <laughs> is that what you're saying? Actual criteria? Yeah, I mean, because this is the thing. Like, as far as I'm concerned, Gabby, okay, we know Gabby has to get a an assignment because if she wants if something happens and she needs to petition to olympic trials which we're going to discuss mm -hmm. these at length because we finally have the procedures she has to have an assignment because she wasn't on the olympic te last olympic team and she wasn't on the last two world teams and those are the otherwise you have to have had an international assignment she hasn't had one in that time frame and therefore she has to get an, an international assignment in order to be able to petition so she has to do this for insurance she needs an assignment should it be baku we're should very be worried about petitions as you will learn when we talk about the olympic selection procedures the number of bizarre scenarios that jessica and i have concocted about people and when they might get injured and on what day and then what that would mean for their petitions just like we're not okay is what we've learned. If we didn't know that already, what we've learned from reading the U.S. Women's Olympic Selection Procedure is that we aren't fine. <laughs> then that is what we've learned. <laughs> Not yeah. doing okay. So I would say it's going to be people that have said, I would like to go to Baku. That's mm -hmm. the one first criteria. You yeah. put your hand up. Uh -huh. And then I would say it's people that are at the level of you are, you're competing with other people who are trying to make the Olympics, so sh you should be at that level. You shouldn't be like, Maybe it's, you know, you're, you should be in the 14s, upper 13s. That's oh, what that I would, would like nice. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So other people, Winter Cup. We discussed Gabby kind of at length last week when we talked about the roster being announced. But are there other things, any, any other feelings, anything else you want to say? Other than like Gabby is competing at Winter Cup and we're very excited to see it. Um, I, I guess... The thing I do want to say is like, yeah, I feel like Trinity has to kind of prove herself because she's in that same uh, group of the basket. There's a basket of people. There's a basket of beautiful gymnastics <laughs> and both Gabby and Trinity are in it. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> that is what I'm saying. And they should just yeah. be pleased with themselves and they are amazing. And we are blessed to be in a time when we can witness their gymnastics. And thank you to both of them. If they are serious about the Olympics, which obviously Gabby has already said she is. Um, and then they need to show that they are either have the base skills or have the scores now to be in serious contention. Because the, Trinity's also in the basket of you have to have an assignment in case mm -hmm. shit insurance to petition. That's yeah. what I'm calling it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ICS. In case. Is that in case? Yeah. S. Um <laughs> That's thank you. I came with an acronym myself. Yeah. So that's, but otherwise, I'm just so excited to see them. And I just hope people like everything they do lose your mind in the <laughs> audience. They put chalk yeah. on their hands, cheer like crazy. <laughs> like act like it's a Be rhythmic gymnastics competition. That's what I'm asking for. <laughs> and throw your towel down really angrily right beforehand. Yeah. Now, you know, like the crowd at the rhythmics, it's insane. It's like a BTS concert or something. They're, you know, or however people screen for it, the, the Taylor Swifts. It's, you know, there's a, that's what I want people to do. Yeah. They get their grips that's out, go nuts, faint. I think <laughs> in terms of, I was thinking about this with Gabby because in terms of expectations, I'm kind of have contradictory thoughts because on the one hand, she's been out for so long. Like it would be, if not unrealistic, at least unfair to have the yes. expectation that you're going to compete at the exact same level that you were last time we saw you in a competition. It's been seven and a half years. I mean, we talk about rust about like when the college season starts and it's like, you were just doing routines last spring. Like that's nothing compared to this. But at the same time, then what we have gotten to know about Gabby's, at least Gabby's competition persona, I don't think she would be showing up to this competition unless she were ready, ready. 
And she even said in that interview, like, this, assignments on the side, like, there's a plan, and it's also involving competing more before, you know, U.S. Classic. So that, and then, so that would lead me to believe or expect, like, we're going to see some really good stuff from Gabby, and then back circling around to, that's also really unfair to expect. So yeah, that's exactly. kind of where I am. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think that the other thing is, and what I keep repeating is, like, she might be totally ready in the gym, but when you go and have the competition nerves again, mm -hmm. sometimes it's different when it's been eight years, six years, whatever it's been. Uh, but I, yeah, I do think that no matter what, if that's the plan, she has to show, like, the, I still got it. Maybe I don't have all my difficulty, but you can see mm -hmm. that it's, these are easy. They, my strength is there. My quickness is there. My form is there. Right. I can add these things. Where if someone comes mm -hmm. back and you're like, oh, you don't have the power anymore to do the D that's yeah. required. It's not going to happen. But we know it's, that this thing, it's not Gabby really hits. About Gabby hits. <laughs> yeah. Gabby hits. Or, but it's also not really about, like, oh, if you fell on beam. Like, it happens, yeah. whatever. No. It's about, like, show us that you have the potential. It's your first meet back. There shouldn't be a ton of stuff. And also, there's lots of assignments. If she doesn't get an assignment here, she can, yeah. there's another camp. Well, she that's, can... Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you weren't ready, you could just, go like, defer and go to do verification at April camp. Right. And then see. So, uh, yeah. other options. In terms of talking about Winter Cup, previewing the competition, because clearly we're very excited. There's yes. the Olympic year, and we're getting very excited. I want to do a new kind of segment of preview that i think you will enjoy called omens and prophecies because <laughs> because since winter cup results are actually like you know nothing's being decided here even that's listed yeah. in the selection procedures for the olympics like you know unless you want to go to the baku world cup and get the layout full twisting jaeger named after yourself the results aren't telling us anything so what would be useful indicators that we might see at winter cup that would portend or act as an omen for what's going to happen about four months from now and then once the olympic team is named we will look back on and say we saw that coming at winter cup when a b and c happened and that told us what was going to happen here so in terms of Omens and prophecies? Work the omens and prophecies portion of the show? <laughs> I've always been waiting for this. Why didn't we start this sooner? I know. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. Yes. I want to talk about Sky Blakely. Yes. Because I feel like the best omen for her this year would be if should she elect to do floor at Winter Cup, because it's Winter Cup. Should she elect to do it, whether we see progress from last season when floor lagged behind and it wasn't really a usable event once they got to worlds you weren't gonna it wasn't an option for the team final sky blakely is extremely talented on floor she has the ability we've seen great training videos i think if we see floor is up to the level then i think that's gonna bode very well especially because lately she's been making teams for beam I mean, other events, too. She can do other events. It's not like Beam Specialist, but it's Beam. If SUNY's back, you just got bumped down the Beam standings because right. it's SUNY. And it's making it harder for someone like Sky Blakely. So you need your all-around all score even more to get up there. So I think I'm looking at Floor to see Sky's chances. The best omen for Sky is that she stopped wearing bows. The best, my <laughs> prophecy, is that she's going to do a chunk. Whoa. Yeah. All right. At least that try it and then she'll see. Maybe she'll be like, this yeah. is stupid. Why am I adding another vault when my, you know, your Chenko vaults are perfectly fine and usable? So. For Kalia Lincoln. Yeah. Someone else we're very excited <gasps> to see, obviously, if you've listened to the show over the past year. Um, what I, I think the biggest indicator for her would be whether we see her leading it out on beam. Because the one thing last year was That's that... eliting it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Because what did I say? I said I, eliting, it's just el like leading it leading out. It out. Yeah. Like she's taking yeah. the beam, dragging it out of there. Well, she enough. should also do that. Put a leash on it, <laughs> drag, take it for a walk, and be like, I own you. Yeah. <laughs> but because we know she has exquisite execution on beam. Acro skills, dance elements... They're wonderful. 
sometimes her beam scores would were not as high last season as you would expect based on her execution ability because of things like rhythm like i think you could have taken both tents for rhythm and tempo in the artistry deduction checklist that little pause maybe between a combination that you'd get away with an ncaa and they pretend never happened but they're not going to do that in elite if those things have been like savvily like working the code a little bit more if we're seeing kalia also add working the code to yeah. having the best execution in the competition then it's over um my prophecy my omen for her is she looked great at camp and she has a tattoo that says what does it say faith over fear and it's facing it's not facing her it faces out at the judges like uh you're welcome <laughs> here i go do not be afraid to give me a, to give a nine execution score. that's right that's have what it faith says. that my dance elements warrant it I, that's how i interpret the tattoo um i really hope that now since we have the judges for olympic trials have been selected and assigned that, that those judges are now going to camp and they will feel empowered and are encouraged to go straight up to the gymnasts and coaches and say hey you're getting 17 artistry deductions how about <laughs> i give you eight tenths here's what to fix fix these things as nicole always says pay yourself eight tenths you're welcome. are they empowered to say that doesn't get connection bonus stop doing it i would like that i would like a level of empowerment to say that <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I would like too. So hopefully that is happening because, you know, she's on our Olympic team as of last year, how she was on f five of the best scenarios for the world team. But anyway, I think she mm -hmm. also needs to just show like bars. Easy for me now. You need someone to do mm -hmm. bars in case I and yeah. S, then you put me on the bars. I'll get you a 12, five, a 13. You it's fine. It, you had it the first time. I Did see I, it. What is it? I see us. That's then right. you went to the In INS. Case shit. Okay. Just, oh, no, not the, the INS, INS you guys. <laughs> I see us. That's the insurance policy. How about DiCello? Because DiCello falls into the, at first I was like, oh no, she was on the 2021 world team. And basically anyone on that team, they're like, you don't count for petitioning to Olympic trials. <laughs> we don't even, you don't exist to us. But she was on the last world team because she was an alternate and that counts as being on I the like team. Alternate. So. Um, in the U.S. Yeah. For DiCello, I was thinking about last Olympic trials and DiCello a lot. Because even though, this is kind of contradicting myself from earlier, where if you fall on beam at Winter Cup, no one cares. But with DiCello, which is true, but with DiCello, I think consistency is so key to her argument. Like, there was basically nothing separating her from Grace McCallum in the last Olympic selection process other than McCallum hit bars both days of trials. Yeah. I feel like that was the only difference and that that spot on the team, the way that team was being selected, could just as easily have gone to Kayla DiCello based on it was just came down to consistency. So if she is like she's the one where I think consistency through the season matters the most. And we even saw it in the selection, you know, write up of the selection process for Worlds last year. The fact that she has four events and experience and consistency they cited in as to why they shock upon shocks deviated from the all-around standings to make DeCello the traveling alternate for worlds rather than Kalia Lincoln and so clearly that is important it's been used for her in the past that idea of we can put you up anywhere team final find whatever qualification whatever you're going to go and you're going to have a routine that's hit and the right difficulty so if she's showing that throughout the year i think that's very that would be a very good omen for her i think uh the fact that she's gone home to train and she talked a lot at camp about like all the the kind of rehab and prehab that she's doing now proactively to care to care to care for her health i think that bodes well for her um omen for gabby douglas is that yeah. first of all she's around a baby cow number one that's great you, what, you don't know this, this? Sensor, you, this is, this you know, know she bought a ranch 
And so okay. she chills on a ranch. They have a they had a calf recently at some point, and they uh and so that's good. And also in the background of all her videos are a lot of books that I also enjoy reading, like well, you know the okay. ser the like young adult series, like fantasy and mystery and all those kind of books. And I'm like, oh, she's enjoying her life. She reads these <laughs> books. She believes she has in the magic. Same taste in books as me. Therefore. <laughs> therefore her well gymnastics her. is wonderful. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Yes, this is the thing. She has like a joyful spirit in there. If you enjoy these kind of books, you know, you mm -hmm. have like a, a you you have a twinkle in your eye. That's what I'm saying. So that is the good omen for her. Um, I think that um, they're basically. I just think that like her showing up this early is the good omen. Mm -hmm. That you know, I mean, Dan Baker specifically in a, a chat that we had talked about wanting people to participate in the process and not just, you know, Chelsea memo themselves into the Olympic, the, the final stages in an Olympic year. <laughs> Essentially I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what adding I'm Chelsea memo as her own editorial. Um, my, that's my own editorial. <laughs> he didn't say that we don't even want any Chelsea's, but you know, I think it's good that she actually got, she got the message early on. Um, and then my just my prophecies in general, Trinity Thomas gets the highest E score of the meet um, on whatever she does. Uh, Sky does her chung. We talked about that. Um, also, I'm prophesizing that when SUNY competes for full twisting Jaeger, someone mm -hmm. faints in the crowd. That this will actually have so okay. glorious and overwhelming mm -hmm. that Angel Singh. The, the sun shines into the arena, even though there's no windows, and yeah. we hear a hallelujah. Are you willing to entertain bets if I were to say, counterpoint, I don't think that's going to happen? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. And then I also think Simone Rose and Jayla Hang are going to have that, like, Leanne Wong. They're new, um, new seniors. And I think mm -hmm. they're going to have the Leanne Wong route of E score over. Like, we have a, it's here's a D. It's an effective D. But we're gonna like kill our scores by having less and having no e score deductions. You know, you still get e score deductions for breathing because it's elite. Yeah. Um, okay, some gymnastic updates, things for you to know about. All right, live show season pass is available for Club Gym Nerd members. This gets we're having four live shows this year. You get four live show virtual tickets for the price of three. So check that out. First one is April nineteenth at NCAA Championships, our normal theater. So fun, you guys. Don't miss it. Um, we have a new Fantasy Gymnastics YouTube show. If you're doing Fantasy Gymnastics, watch it. It'll tell you how to get an easy 10. Who's in the 9-9 nine, nine groups? Who's out? So remember to take them out of your lineup, which once again, I forgot to do my lineup this week. Uh, we have a Winter Cup Fantasy Challenge. It's now live for Club Gym Nerd members who are trying out the Elite system. $65,000 Gymcastic bu budget. And mm -hmm. so you can have SUNY and Gabby in your all around, <laughs> even though SUNY's not doing it. So don't don't put her in your all around. Who's Gabby, and beam, she said it. <laughs> I think Gabby's going to do all around, um, or at least three events. Um, so you're going to draft two all arounders and then one per event. So check that out. You can play now. Um, and also on our fantasy league for college week seven, our current leader with a 198. You guys are getting really good at this. High flyers. <laughs> With a HY, uh, but we with still the have caveat that we are yeah. recording this before the UCLA Utah meet. Yep. So we shall see. This week's NCA fantasy lineups will lock on Friday the twenty third at noon. The Winter Cup fantasy league lineups lock Saturday the twenty fourth at noon. Wait, isn't that after the meet noon starts? Eastern. Noon Eastern. When does the meet start? So it's right before noon. Right Eastern before. Will be right before. So the you meet. have like. You're going to have, because basically we're not going to have the lineups until 24 hours before. So we're we, giving you to the last give second. We a much time to find out like, oh, who withdrew the last second? Yes. <laughs> because you never know. And we don't know who's even doing all around or who's doing what events. So this is why you need to listen yeah. on, right after podium training so we can tell you what we saw. And then you can set your lineups. So check it out, gymcaster.com, the fantasy links. And thanks to everybody who's show, is sharing their favorite moments on social. We love sharing those. And we love knowing what your favorite moments are. All right. A little more about Winter Cup, because we did talk about it a lot um, last 
week, but I think it's important to like, cause now we're like, Oh, we've been college, college, college. And now elite season right. is back. And we have the mm-hmm. world cup series, the last way to qualify besides the, the continental qualifiers to, yeah. um, but those are easy. You just win all around and then boop, you it's go so easy. Just win. So easy. Yeah. You guys. Oh my God. So anyway, <laughs> that's the shirt you need. It's so yeah. easy. Just win. It's so easy. <laughs> elite gymnastics. So easy. Um, what is a good score? What are we looking at? Remind mm. us like what the world of non nine nine seven fives looks like. Yeah, what the world of elite is. So basically on bars, 14 is a great like world class you could get into an event final with if you're scoring in the 14s. Lately, the last couple of years, it's taken like a 14-7 to win a medal there. And we have, you know, we're adding in Gabby, we're adding in SUNY, at least potentially. So top bars workers who can get big scores the olympic year you always kind of expect everyone's gonna push some things up do as much as they possibly can but that's what we've seen lately so if you're seeing someone score high 13s on bars at winter cup that's a great marker for this point in the season if they're hitting 14 you're like oh my god you're a miracle so that's kind of what i'm looking for on bars beam Basically, if you can get a 14 on beam, it means you're one of the best beamers in the world. Like, if you've yep. broken 14, you're a magical star. Um, high 14 means you're Simone or Suni or Jung or Chu. Like, if you're high 14, yep. you are r- the most rarefied of airs. But we're putting definitely putting Suni in that category. She's dismounting double pike. Yeah. That is, you know. Floor, I would say a little lower. Like, high 13 is among the best on floor. I don't think it's as critical that you're able to score 14 there to be, you know, one of the, make an event final, one of the best, very, very best floor workers. Of course, like mid 14, you're starting to get into like Simone and Andrade and Gatarova and nobody else. Right. But yeah, like mid 14, it's not as required, I would say, on floor. What about the all around? Where are we looking? Like, if you're competing the all around and you want to be, this is a world class all around score, or I want to make the US team with my yeah. all around score. So, the 56s are the people who meddled in all around at Worlds last year. Yeah. So, if you want to make the US team, you there should be at least two or three people who are aiming or can get in that range, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because there are. That's the thing. I mean, you have a Shailise and Simone. They're going to be in that range, like 55, 56. Um, I think that if you can get in the 55s, this is very, very, very good yeah. um, for you. But 56 is like the top of the very, very top. Um, you know, yeah, I would and- say like if you're 54 at Winter Cup, 55 at Classic, classic championships 56 at trials that's like a good a good yeah. trajectory because that's the other thing it's winter cup no one is going to be like this is what i'm saying if you, <laughs> you want to be like, not be at 100 percent at this meet please that's don't a bad be- sign. <laughs> <laughs> or if you are you should be just doing almost no full routines until you know six weeks before like you know classic championships because you don't want to be 100 percent at those either you want to be 100 percent at trials so, but then you still have the last another and the Olympics. <laughs> three weeks. So, yeah, you need it's impossible downtime. regardless. Yeah. But I'm what I'm saying, like when I say, oh, I hope people are in the high 13s on some of these events at, you know, if you want to say I'm here and I'm going to relax for a little while, but just so you know, I can do this and get this high of scores at Winter Cup, then, you know, you're making a statement. OK, execution, because thank God. I mean, you know, there's a lot of improvements at NBC, but whew, we finally get an elite meet that's not NBC. So because we don't we're not have a green triangle, how are we gonna will, live a, without green triangles? A yellow Spencer? square. How will I know <sighs> whether a routine is medium if it doesn't have a yellow square next to it? Okay. Um, execution score wise on vault, they're gonna be much higher than on any of the other events. Like more than a stupid. point, more than a point higher than any of the other events. I would say. Like a 9-2 to 9-3 execution score on vault means you're a solidly competitive U.S. Yurchenko double fall. Because given the the outlook right now with the U.S. team, it's possible that they have everything on the Olympic team and the team final higher than a Yurchenko double fall. Yep. People have upgrades. You have a few people. But I think 
most likely at this point, we're looking at at least one, maybe two Yurchenko double fulls going in the team final for the U.S. at the Olympics. You know, we'll see. If you're able to do that vault and get a 9-2, 9-3 execution, you're in the mix for that as a usable one. You could be that person who's going on vault in a team final. If your execution score on your double full is like 8-9, probably not going to be used on a U.S. team in a team final. Yes. Bars, anything over an 8 is great. 8.5 is exceptional. Especially right. internationally. 8.5 U.S., great. 8.5 outside the U.S., exceptional, amazing. But yeah, if you are anything over an 8, you have beautiful bars. Yeah, 8 is great. Why hasn't NBC adopted that? I mean, it rhymes. It's catchy. <laughs> this is the t-shirt yeah. we need. 8 is great. Yeah. Good job, everyone. <laughs> Eight is great. Yeah. It means you don't have that many pirouettes in your routine if you can get an eight in execution. You didn't lose five tenths for finishing a toe on fall at horizontal. Um, beam. Eight. I mean, beam anything over eight is a magical hit. Yeah. You're a magic, you're a magic person. Yeah. You're happy with a seven eight, I think, right. as far as a beam execution score. Floor, it's been really variable. I think. If you're at Winter Cup and you're like, I hit a good floor routine, you want that to be hitting the eight mark in execution. Looking internationally, like eight five means you're Brazilian and you didn't get any artistry deductions, yep. basically, for an eight five execution. Of note, zero people at the Cairo World Cup got an eight execution on floor. Yeah. So Even for Emma both comparing, <laughs> Malibuya was there. Yeah. For comparison purposes and for what the expectations are, through qualification and finals, no one no one got out of the sevens. So that's it's worth noting that yep. you had good, well executed floor routines with no major errors there from people who can do dance elements, and they got seven eight seven seven. Yeah, I'm so glad we just. I mean, this is. I really want to make our own execution system and it just like hearts, stars, and like. Oh, God, that's even worse. Well, I like hearts and stars. <laughs> what do you want them to be? And then an emoji that's like, yeah. like that. How yeah, dare Jessica, you? Fact checker, greed. I don't need any of you. Like, if mail. Jessica were in charge of this, you would just have like, there would be like a picture of a unicorn's horn next to a routine and you'd be like i don't what is what is that and you'd be like Ugh, that means gabby did an upgrade on beam <laughs> obviously yes. unicorn horn means gabby did an upgrade on beam why is no one keeping up with me excuse me it would be a unicorn with its horn because we don't cut off unicorn oh, horns but i didn't mean to imply My that we were poaching gosh. that's right thank you Ugh. we just played an entire <laughs> harry potter open world game about this so about poaching about poaching. So don't well, I don't want to repeat that. It was traumatic enough playing that game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. Um we also have so you mentioned Jayla Hang and Simone Rose for a second, but this is the, new the opportunity to see some new seniors. Yeah, this means new seniors in as in Paris eligible. Even though some Correct. of them are still on the junior national team, even though they're Paris eligible, which I don't that, it's like so we have pay to no attention to which national was, team they're on. They were junior national team last year when they were juniors. Right. But that's like it carries over. Anyway, I'm just reminding everyone because when I look at it, I feel mm -hmm. like there should be a star. Except there should be a, yeah. 20, there should be a designation. So, you know, because I have to go back and look up everyone's birthday. So, Hesley is now a senior. Mm -hmm. Paris eligible. Risa Sponda with her amazing floor. And like the floor mm -hmm. that I'm obsessed with, with all the superhero poses and flippies and all the things, that's the floor routine everyone wants to try at home in the living room when they get home. That is the, and the flippy mm -hmm. stuff, not the acrobatics, not just the dance. And then Jayla Hang and Simone Rose. Of course, Simone Rose has the like creepy Medusa, like underwater spooky routine. It reminds me of that robot, uh, robot show on Netflix. I can never remember the name of with the conquistador <laughs> and the underwater like spirit and the gold. Haven't we talked about I this? I truly have no idea what you're talking Death about. Death and Robots on the series. Okay. The one with the conquistador and the water spirit. Oh my god, it's okay, so if I anyway, Jayla if Hank. I had signed up for Jim Castic's Club Gendered Members Winter Cup Challenge, and I was like, I think it would be fun to have some juniors on my team because I can get to know them this way. 
and yes. follow their routines and follow their scores. Who would you recommend and on what events? Like, what should I, What what's the strategy? What should I do? Oh, so because you actually want to win things or you want to be happy? No, it doesn't. I don't. I, okay. th- I'm th- acting as a theoretical person right now because I already picked my team and I know what I'm going for. Yeah. I'm speaking in the guise of someone who maybe doesn't care as much about winning as I do, which I can speak confidently about because I don't think anyone cares as much about winning as I do. No, yes. Um, I would, okay, Hesley, I love her new full twisting um, leap to hand, like uh, to kneeling on floor. It's so cool looking. I love that. And also she just has beautiful form. So I think you're you're safe with Hesley. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, she has beautiful toe point on bars too. Reese, floor. Put her on floor. Put, put Reese on floor. It. Yes. Yeah. Uh, J- yeah. Jayla, I would put her on beam. Um, and Simone Rose, uh, I love her floor routine. It's so good. Jayla has an upgrade, I think, that she's shown she's doing a full um, on her Instagram on beam. So, yeah, that's as long as she's got the sideways choreography down. Because remember, that was the <laughs> one year <laughs> that was new and everyone was like, I have to bend over. I'm going to die now. Um, but they have good basics, good form, good difficulty. And I think Jayla was also training an Aminar we've seen. So she's been great on vault. Yeah. Yeah. So I would take her on that too. Hesley, if you like beautiful form, just put her. Just put her on anything. Yeah. Flippies. Fun yeah. superhero. Reese. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let us discuss the Olympic selection procedure because finally we have oh, this. Finally. It's finally out. This is my number one question for Chelsea and Alicia at camp, The who are the, the Trident. What is it called? The Trident called the high performance trio. Yeah. So there's they there's really no surprises. It's um, the team is five, which we already knew. The all yeah. around winner from Olympic trials, not mm-hmm. the top two or better. Yeah, all around winner only right. from Olympic is trials, not the top Olympic... two. Right, you have to win Olympic trials to make the team, and then they'll pick the whole the rest of the team. So, and also... I think that's an I prefer that to um you know to a uh, two automatic. I think it gives you more leeway. Yeah, I like that too. I I think that you are. It's it's a more fair way to do it because it is a puzzle and it depends on who's there. Which speaking of who's there, Olympic trials. There's a minimum of 12 gymnasts going to trials, not mm-hmm. only 12, a minimum yeah. of 12. So there's Probably you know an more. option for people freaking out about whose petitions or who got invited. <laughs> oh, know, that's like, going to happen regardless though. Right. So there's going to be a cutoff somewhere because there's I, always a, you have to cut it off somewhere. I'm and if, fine. Whatever it is, we're going to have a problem with it. I'm yeah. fine with 12 because it's like, you know, at, at trials, um, mm-hmm. Top two after two days combined at championships get to go to trials. That's fair. Yeah. You're the top mm-hmm. two at championships. You can go to trials. Yeah, I mean, only the tri- automatics only from trials championships winning. to trials. You can really, you know, invite yeah. the gang. Then you have five people on the team, and then you can have up to four alternates. So two people that actually travel and two people that stay home. So then there's only, if there's 12 people at trials, there's only three people that aren't going to make the team. And they probably know that going in. So there's less, you know, there's less upset on that i i just feel like there's less heartbreak i mean i i think they will invite more it's a minimum of 12 and i think you want that in terms of giving yourself options especially because you're picking four alternates in addition to a five member team but yeah i think i definitely grant your point that it's better to be what it's better to be straightforward with anyone about what their chances are Right. And so if you don't have, like, if you're in the eyes of the selectors, you don't really have any chance to make the Olympic team, it's better to just be clear about that and say, this is the reality of the situation right. than just invite people. But you could also be like, hey, you're probably not going to make the team, but isn't it fun to go to Olympic trials, Amelia Hundley, and have the time of your life? <laughs> I mean, you know, Camille is option. the case for who we want to go just for the sake of going and like, are just like, I'm here. My life is fulfilled. That is the reason to have them. But 
Um, also, my favorite thing at the very bottom, I don't know if you read the very bottom of the uh, selection procedures, but it now includes what I'm calling a chain of custody, which is a, a <laughs> police term that I've added. It's called officially the audit report, but basically it shows the chain of custody from when the document was created and who signed it and who emailed it and where it went. It's basically like did anyone intercept this? Was there, if anything has been changed from what the, you know, USOPC allowed and approved, who mm -hmm. touched it? And I love this. I think it is really the USOPC being like, or USA Gymnastics being like, no interference here. You can see the chain, which has mm -hmm. never been that things in writing have never been the, you know, controversies yeah. with it. But okay. So, so Spencer, what stood out to you? reading these procedures yeah a number of things like we alluded to earlier regarding theoreticals and petitions yeah. like i think if if everyone stays healthy through the entire year i think these are it's a very expected procedure if not exactly what i would do shocking like <laughs> that's the big surprise there was no there was no paragraph like we're just spencer's right we're just gonna pick a <laughs> pick the team exactly how Spencer would. Yeah, there was nothing like that, and we're all surprised. Um, the petitions could get interesting, because there's always going to be some, you know, the reality is there's always going to be some right. injury, someone's not able to go at a critical moment. The petitioning to trials that you must have competed at classic or championships as part of the requirements to be able to petition, I think is interesting. So you can't get in, like you couldn't get injured at winter cup and then petition directly to Olympic trials. You have to be back by at least championships. Yeah. And so that I think is going to be significant depending on what happens. Plus you have to be 20 Tokyo Olympics, 2022 worlds or 2023 worlds or an international assignment this year which has already <laughs> been termed the no connors rule because they didn't include the 2021 worlds team as part of that so that could also uh get interesting yes uh i'm calling it the no connors and no gabby rule yeah but gabby's competing right now in elite and connor is not competing at winter cup she's at lsu and being like this is how you do a wolf jump <laughs> Everybody, watch this, and then you'll understand why you shouldn't get a 10. <laughs> Connor at LSU is the, these are so easy, these routines in college. I've been doing them since, like, before middle school, so I don't know why someone, everyone's so excited when I dismount, but yay, I'm, I'm having fun. Yeah, um, so the you can petition directly onto the Olympic team. Yes, that's the another most... provision that is possible. It's difficult. This it's is very the Simone difficult. Asterisk. It's the asterisk. Simone rule. Yeah. 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 Like, obviously, because I was like, oh, there's no cutout for Simone, which there was always a Simone asterisk. But then I was like, oh, this is the Simone asterisk. This is the Simone asterisk. Do we think, basically, you can petition onto the Olympic team, but you have to be like the best one. Do yeah. we think, do you think there's any context in which anyone other than Simone would ever have a petition onto the Olympic team accepted? Uh, the, I do, the exception would be some, so here's are here are real life things that have happened mm -hmm. that have prevented athletes from competing besides an injury and an injury mm -hmm. that will be fine that you can't compete at trials, but will be fine two weeks later enough that you can keep your level up. I, injury mm -hmm. is kind of like, uh, Unless you're just waiting for a concussion to be better, but even then you can't get your heart rate up with a concussion. I don't. I don't see an injury being a reason to petition onto the team, but um, petition to trials, yes. To petition onto the team, no. But here's real life things that have happened: volcano eruptions have prevented athletes from getting to. We don't. Do we have any volcano? We do have volcanoes in the United States. Thank you very much. Um, a mm -hmm. gym. Your gym flooded. So mm -hmm. you have nowhere to work out um, and your coaches are like, oh, my God, what are we going to do about this? That has actually happened. That happened to Sean Johnson. Um, yeah, I remember the fluff pieces. Yeah. The Coke sponsored the whole bring the what? gym back to life. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Coke. You know, Coca-Cola. Oh, I got it. I understood. Oh. <laughs> so the um, you've had a death in the family. That's also happened. 
in the middle of Olympic trials. That is a real life thing that has happened in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about things in the world, not to an Olympic athlete, not necessarily in the United States. Um, also, just climate change disasters in general, preventing things from happening um, is a more and more a reality of what we're seeing. Like, just for example, like we live in California, we're having hurricane force winds in part of the um, of California, what we've never had before. Um, and we're like, oh, great. We get to have hurricanes now, too. We, we thought that was we avoided that by not being on the side of the country. So I'm just saying there's going to be more things like that. Like there was heat things that happen where people couldn't travel. So there are things that can happen. Do you think, even if that happened to someone who isn't Simone, I don't think they would be, and they had to miss trials, I don't think they would be, they would have a petition accepted. If it was last, if it was last, if it was Tokyo Olympics, and SUNY had one, because SUNY beat Simone, just like she did at the Olympics, because Simone didn't compete. Um, SUNY beat uh Simone at trials one day or was it championship? So let's say it was last it was last Olympics Tokyo lead up. Um SUNY had won, had beat Simone at championships and classic. Um and then couldn't compete at trials because of whatever. I'm not saying this has never there's never been a case previously where someone who isn't Simone could petition onto the team. I'm saying this year, I don't think anyone other than Simone would have a petition onto the team accepted. Yeah. Extremely unlikely is what I'm going to say. You keep it there. You keep it in the rules just in case. Right. Just in case, because you, you never know things happen. Yeah. So okay, the question wanna... is, should, should you be able to? Well, I think you keep, you keep it in the rules. I mean, I, the thing is, if you're not able to compete at trials, which start June 27th, are you able to compete at an Olympic level? And there are scenarios, like you were outlining, like there are some unusual scenarios where like, yeah, you could still, by the time the Olympics start, even if you aren't able to do any gymnastics at trials. But so, you know, you keep it open, but I would be extremely and I think it's extremely unlikely that this would happen, but you keep it in the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wish there was a scenario where they'd be like, uh, we're going to name you an alternate, but you and this person are competing for the spot. So if you don't get back to where <laughs> you were. That received very well. <laughs> I know, but that's competition. Everyone's know, competing. That's the thing. That's why I don't like competing. That's why I like doing adult gymnastics meets because it's just for mm -hmm. fun. Who cares what happens? So there's two months between U.S. championships and the Olympics, but between trials and the mm -hmm. Olympics, there's only Which if two. you're not competing at trials and have to petition under the team, that's assuming that's you the scenario. Are able to do no events at Olympic trials. Yeah, um, I would like to read aloud a portion of the selection procedures for Ooh. the women team. The sport of gymnastics is a subjectively judged event. Ugh. In the selection of athletes who will compete together as a team, it is difficult to make selections solely by the all-around rank order and be competitive for both team and individual event medals. What? The current rules do not require athletes to compete in the all-around competition, which necessitates evaluating individual event strength and contribution to total team score in order to maximize medal potential. Did I write that? <laughs> Are they saying it's a puzzle and you don't figure out the puzzle necessarily by just taking the best all arounders because it's three up three count, not five people in the all around that decides which team wins and who wins individual medals. Spencer, is this the, did you think they should start with this in all caps <laughs> and be like, I we are subtweeting all that, the previous Olympic selection. Yeah, I would like, I would love it if like you listen to yourself. <laughs> Yeah, re put this in the selection procedures and do it because this is not how teams have been selected over the past six years, which has been all around. Yeah. So I would love if this portends a team score based selection, but it's also, you know, very broad, not like the men's selection procedures, which is very funny to read back to back to the women's because theoretically, these are two selections doing the exact same thing. 
a five-member team in artistic gymnastics for the Olympics, and they have very, very different approaches. Yep. And I have to say, like, Kensley is very high on the men, and, and, you know, with, yeah, you know, there's things. <laughs> with caveats, because she and I were texting about it today. Yes, same. With caveats, <laughs> there's, there's right? Some caveats. <laughs> yeah, so Kensley is very high on the men's selection procedure, and I, have, and, you know, you should listen to what she has to say um, at um, Neutral Deductions about it, because her analysis is always very, very thorough. Um and she didn't like immediately want to light her on fire, which is a great change. So <laughs> I I don't know I what that say, feeling is like. <laughs> I really like the idea that they are laying out like, here's the scenario. Here's the math, like bring your spreadsheets, which there is a bring your spe- spreadsheets portion of the Olympic trials procedure, which is like we if you're petitioning, we're going to look at your consistency and your assignments and how you did in the past. You can't just be like, but now I'm getting a. 14 like how did you could you stay on the beam the whole rest of the time could you stay on bars the whole rest of the meets that we sent you to so um but i do like that about the men so they are showing the scenarios Mm -hmm. and being like very transparent about here's how we do it because that's the only thing that's fair to the athletes yeah that's the thing and so i wish that after this this section of the trials procedure they had i wish there was an addendum that's I love an addendum. You love an addendum. Oh, oh I love an addendum. Loves an addendum. Oh my god. Um, that was like, here's a scenario. This person has wins the all around, but is not as great on floor. So we are looking for someone that, that we don't want to use them on floor. That's in our three up three count scenario. That's what we're actually planning for, and we have a world champion on this event. So we blah blah blah. Um, I also hate the part that it says it's to subjectively judge because guess what else is subjectively judged? Although I love this paragraph. I just hate every sport because if you need a referee, guess what? It's subjectively judged when you run and then they have a finish line thingy and they look back at it like someone's doing that. Someone's saying who was in first, even it looks like you tied referees in the basketball. What if a a robot's doing it? What if a robot? Oh my God. That's why they're called robot judges. Spencer, robot judges. Because anyway, it's all, even algorithms have bias, especially if they're made by a bunch of dudes who come from the same cultural background. Um, I just wish they would, you know, anything that needs a referee is, is judged. You know, did someone get elbowed yeah. in the face or did someone just throw themselves on the ground and roll around? Soccer. What a joke. <laughs> My, like so basically even Men reading soccer, this specifically my not expectation is that the team will be still the top five all around from trials at least that is what they are going to defer to unless simone is like my ankle hurts i'm only doing bars and beam at trials and then that's different um and then after they name the team and it's the top five all around i will go back and read this aloud again on our show and be mad my hopeful reading of this paragraph is that it says Yes, we can see, like, if SUNY's only competing bars and beam at trials but creates the highest scoring team, we'll be willing to pick her, as they should. And I'm hoping this, that's what this paragraph is saying, but, like, we actually are open to it, even though we haven't been doing that in a while. Yeah. That, and that's the thing. I feel like the only, I mean, I asked Chelsea at camp specifically about this because of SUNY coming back. And I was like, is she, where do you have to be in the, on two events at least to make the team? And she was like, oh, you're going to have to be the top one or two, but this is, and obviously that's not in the selection procedure. This is just her saying how she feels about mm-hmm. it, but she's not the only one on the, you know, on the selection committee. So it's not just up to her. Like everyone thought, well, Marta decides the team. There's three people that decide the team. So, but if, you know, SUNY yeah. wins two events consistently, classic but championships, here's, trials. Here's my hypothetical. Mm. And again, we don't know how many events SUNY's going to end up competing this summer. We, we're all we're all in hypothetical land. Yes. But here's where I... Where we love to live, Where Spencer. we live. This is a podcast. Of course we live in hypothetical land. Here's a potential scenario where I think it would cause frustration and selection. Let's say SUNY goes to trials. She's like, I'm a bars and beam specialist this year. This is what I'm doing. She wins bars at Olympic trials over two days. Amazing routine. Very believable scenario. 
Yes. Falls on beam on day one. Day two hits a top three beam score you'd use in a team final. But her overall placement on beam, her second event, is not that high because she fell on day one. For me, Suni's on the Olympic team. Yeah. You she's adding to the team score. You want that bars. You saw that beam hit the second day. You want her on beam in the team final. That's also a top three score there. Would that be enough? And would they put SUNY on the team if they're saying, you know, you need to be top on two events and it's going to be hard. I think that's the potential for frustration. And that's the biggest opportunity for frustration and controversy in the way the women's selection procedures are written compared to the men's where they say, we're putting together the highest scoring team using, you know, set one of scores uses best three of four from nationals and trials set two is best four or four. If those agree, that's the team and there's no selection involved. Yep. More, you have a more straightforward approach to you made up the highest scoring team. So we'll go for it. And you hit most of your routines. Yeah. So that's, that's where I see like, oh, that, that, I'm preparing my like the, my biggest complaints. Like we have only have four months to go. I got to prepare what I'm going to be mad about in Olympic selection. I'm like that kind of scenario. I think would be a problem, and why I would like specific standards written for how, especially how they're going to evaluate a two eventer. Right. That's why I wish they would just make scenarios like the men have made. If we don't go by all around. It is because of this and this and this. Because all of these scenarios have played out. Like, in and thinking, like, um, how about a scenario like what happened in the last Olympics? You lo you lose your best all-arounder. Mm -hmm. Who do you want for three up, three count to fill that in? Like, that's what they're afraid of, right? That's why they just keep picking this yeah. way. So yeah. why not just codify that? We love a codified yeah, there's scenario. There's an interesting provision in the men's selection procedures that basically says... If it turns out that the highest scoring team doesn't have enough coverage for qualification and only has three people who could go on an event, because that's I think that's more likely in the men's because you'll yeah. have like a Steven Nedarosic maybe who's not doing any other event. And then and that have, has happened. That's, yeah, a scenario that's have, happened to other teams, Ukraine. You don't have you have three people to go on an event, so you can do a team final fine, but you they'd all have to count in qualification as well. Then they have a provision that basically says if that's the case, the highest scoring team has to be really, really good and significantly more better than any other team to then be selected. Otherwise, we go to, you know, procedure A, B, and C. And I like that there is an acknowledgement to that, which is basically the, the most compelling complaint to how I like to make teams, which is just the highest scoring team, which is, but what if someone gets injured and then you put up Joss Robertson on bars in the team final or something? And I'm like, well, then someone got injured and you put up Joss Robertson on bars in the team final. Yeah. There are always things that happen. You can't uh, account for everything. But this says, this is the scenario where we're willing to take that risk versus these are the scenarios that we're not. And I like that. I think the scenario you're pointing out there is the difference between trying to win versus trying to play it safe. Mm -hmm. Right? And going for we have to have we have to accept the fact that there are other teams that can beat us if we don't have the highest uh, like scoring team as opposed to the scenario of picking by well, this is the safest to do the best and leaving people that can give you the highest scores at home, at home because that's what's happened in the past. So it's instead of trying to go, go for it and get on the medal stand because you know other people can beat you. You have to have the highest scoring people plan for that. You are like, oh, like, well, this is safe. Let's just. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I, my feeling is you should always assume that everyone's better than you. Well, yeah, you should. I mean, because... Never assume you're the best one. No. That's you Don't assume you're safe. Assume you need to... <laughs> I'm not saying that's the all. mentally healthiest approach, to always assume you're garbage, but it can be effective. <laughs> the only scenario where you can afford to not go your hardest is, um, I think, where... You either just have to prove you can hit a minimum all the time or pommel horse finals. All those guys look at <laughs> where they are 
it, like who fell before them and then they're like oh i don't have to do my hardest routine or oh crap max whitlock uh you know hit so now i have to do my hardest routine so oh my god palm horse final i mean you guys think beam is insane yeah palm horse finals that's what i'm saying imagine my- that but with boys it's so much more chaotic <laughs> My worst yeah, case so, scenario for yeah. way before, before we get to the Cairo World Cup headlines, um, the yeah, Olympic qualifier. A, it tells you what you need to know about Olympic selection procedures, that we're spending this long on it now, now. before Winter Cup, thinking about scenarios <gasps> and complications. So bookmark this, you guys, to listen to it again oh, when everyone's yeah. freaking out because these things are going to happen. My worst case scenario is the a gymnast who's, you know, Great. We want her on the team. She's looking yeah, great. Worst case scenario is that there's a gymnast who's great. <laughs> it's so much easier when everyone's terrible. <laughs> it's a gymnast who's proved, like, say it's a Gabby Douglas and she gets, uh, or it's a Trinity, or it's a, yeah, a Connor and does Winter Cup. You never know. Maybe Connor show up at the last second do Winter oh, Cup. It's, great. I mean, you know, <laughs> they're trying to sell tickets here. NBC doesn't have the rights to this. They're, you know, um, but they're, one of those people who who's not on the list of people who basically count as like, oh, we're counting your past competitions, which is like Gabby Connor. Uh, one of those people is does great at Winter Cup, does great on assignment where like they are does does amazing, mm-hmm. goes to like American Classic or something. Um, well, no, American Classic counts now, but c- mm-hmm. gets hurt right before um, chant the classic means classic. And therefore, because they haven't competed at Classic, they ca- their petition ends there. Like they, well, that wasn't count wouldn't count if they got an assignment because now if they get assignments, so it would be a Connor situation. If Connor doesn't compete an assignment for a Classic and then gets hurt, she's out, done. That's the scenario. Or Trinity. No, she has Winter Cup. No, but she hasn't had an international we'll assignment. If she does well, we'll an international we assignment, anyway, we that, those we'll are my scenarios. Okay. Assignments. Yeah. If you don't want to bother with the whole joining club gym nerd thing, you can just give us money. Check out the no strings attached donate button at the bottom of the join the club page at gymcastic.com slash club. Cairo World Cup happened. This is the first meet in the series of four to qualify to Paris. They're your best three results out of the four meets count. And it's not your results necessarily because it goes by points and you have to go by points. There's a point you... system. There's a ranking system. I'm in, I'm in heaven. Your, it's your favorite thing ever. It goes by points, 30 points for gold, 25 for silver, 20 for bronze. And you take, you have to remove the people who got points here um, potentially or their placement who are from a country that already qualified. So take out the or China already qualified individually at world. Yes. Last year. Yeah. Both of those things. But what I want to talk about first, most importantly, Spencer, obviously is the opening ceremonies for, so go through these fact checker because this was the most extra <laughs> spec. Ta- there was, we, there was a, we know, a string we love that lasers, <laughs> <laughs> string quartet there were drums there were children holding little tiny lights there were um there were women in dressed as grecian gods i don't know it might be an egyptian thing but that's all i can relate it to so that's what i'm describing it as um dancing there were more lasers the ceiling of the arena looked it looks like a tomb it looks like the you know it's amazing this place and how they did the lasers this is how every meet should be did i mention the drums you guys Mm, i love this anyway so now let's talk about hillary heron (laughs) (laughs) what we're saying is is pomp too much to ask a little ceremony, a little pomp and circumstance, a little special. Like, remember there was a World Cup that was, like, in a gym and with, like, no seats? And, like, you guys. I mean, it's great. Everyone's getting a World Cup. Spread them around the world. That's great. But, like, let's put some oomph. Especially, it's an Olympic qualifier. It's a big deal. Hillary oh, Heron from Panama, one of the gymnasts who can do a Biles. Um, she's already qualified to Paris, but she competed at the World Cup because guess what she did? She got her full in, half out, tucked, named after herself. And she got a little scroll and it was presented to her. Boopity boop. You have a skill named after yourself. 
imagine if we get this moment with Suni where she gets her little scroll. I'm describing it as a scroll, but it was a piece of paper that was, you know, had the things on <laughs> In it. In Jessica's mind, there, it was a scroll. Yes. It's literally just a sheet of paper. <laughs> sheet of paper that's official looking or, I'm or call a, a we are looking at an actual picture of just this obvious sheet of paper that she's holding and jessica has been describing this to me as a scroll for days and now i'm seeing like oh it's a form it's a, an I mean, administrative form. it's basically your um it's the new element and she's like yes i did a new element is there a video of it here it is but i love that she posed with this and obviously you could roll it up and unroll it and then it's scrolling so yeah. that's what i'm you calling would it. need to do that thing where you like make it look old yes you burn like the burn, edges. burn the yes. edges do some like how do you like use tea or something to stain yeah. it so that it has some mm -hmm. age look you would really need to do that for for the full scroll effect i think um i love that you know these things just like i do because obviously i had a science kit and that's all i did with my science kit is make <laughs> things look like ancient scrolls that then you had to burn yeah. to see the secret message which was oh, like great. meet me around the corner mm -hmm. anyway mm -hmm. Congratulations to Hillary, and I can't wait. I hope Suni also poses with her new element entry form. <laughs> <laughs> and Jessica, if you send it to Jessica, she will make it look like an old scroll for you. I'm going to make want. her an old scroll right now, just in case, to send yeah. to her. And if, cause yeah. she deserves it. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Emma Malibuyo because. Yes. Competing Big in college, deal. competing for the Philippines, was an Olympic alternate. Wasn't Emel Mabu was an Olympic yeah. alternate? Yeah. yeah. Um, now, yes. Yeah, so huge deal. Top qualification points getter on floor at the Cairo World Cup. She got silver medal, but Okamura, who won gold, Japanese ineligible because they already qualified a team. So Malibuyo gets the 30 points, the maximum points for floor from the Cairo World Cup huge deal huge result for her because it was really close on floor i mean two tenths about separated second from seventh and if malibuyo had scored two tenths lower and was in seventh in that final we would be having a very different conversation about her chances to get an olympic spot but she's in you know it's still a long way to go but best case scenario from the first event you have to count three and it's more urgent for malibuyo because she's only yeah. going to three because the fourth event, the Doha World Cup, is the same weekend as NCAA and Nationals. So she's just scheduled for the first three and is going back to UCLA in between after two, before Baku. It's a whole thing. Um, but so she very much needed a big result from every event. And because she missed on beam in qualification and is only doing three events, that's kind of out She's not going to get any points from this one for beam, and she only has three meets. So, you know, this was very big for her. I think a really important result. It puts her in a good position. Still has to mm -hmm. do this two more times. But I think it puts her in a very good position, and it's very exciting. If she doesn't get the top points at the net, because you have to be, is it top two that go, or you have to win? Two people for each apparatus. For each event. So if she's, she's not first, first right or second. Now, but, you know, yeah. more events. If she's not first or second by points after, after three after and there's two. one yeah. more, but it's during NCAA championships, do you, or she would have to fly like, you know, no, it's during NCAA it's championships. During, there's no you way. Not do both. Yeah. Would you as her coach be like, I believe in you forget your scholarship. We'll do it without you, even though you're our most solid person. <laughs> On beam. Okay. No. What Are you, you asking me, like, if I were Janelle? Is that is that the question here? If Spencer yes. were Janelle McDonald? No, I would not let her do that. But I would be immediately fired from any college <laughs> head coaching position. Like, I am not the person to ask. But I also would be like, oh, Anna Potterario, you want to not compete this year and go for the Canadian Olympic team? No. Jordan Childs, you want to not compete this year? No, I wouldn't have let any of them do that because I would have been like, I want to win and I want all of our best gymnasts on this team. So I am not the person to ask about that. But I think, you know, it's tough for finals. But what if UCLA gets eliminated at regionals? Does it make Stop NCAAs? It. Spencer... it could happen, Jessica. Oh, These are real things. It's a no, real world. Great. They could get eliminated at regionals. Then do you like 
do you last minute enter? Are you already entered? And then C, I don't know. I can't even think about that yet because like, what if like if Cal or Michigan state or Michigan or Oklahoma or Florida or LSU or any of these You're teams naming, yeah, got eliminated at regionals, which has happened before that, like the top, top <laughs> only eight make nationals. You're going to be upset by Understood. something. I'm preparing Sorry. you. For this. We're done with this. Don't. Um, I wonder if anybody yeah. has ever like not shown up to NCAA championships or something like this. And basically that the school clawed back their scholarship. I have no idea. Because this is for sure happened where someone are just like, but I wonder if they w- didn't do that because then it'd be news. It probably happened at a school where no one was paying attention. Um, <laughs> or but back it's, in the day when you could sweep it under the rug and no one would tweet about no it. No one know Because for sure someone has been like drunk or high or overslept and, mm. you know, did, yeah. you know. Wasn't yeah. that in that running movie? Um, who was that guy? Prefontaine? Um, that he like had an all night sex bender and so he slept through his NCAA championship, Steve Prefontaine. That was the one with the handstand sex. Anyway, guys, always the bronze. <laughs> always that one has it too. Always note the sex moments, the gymnastics <laughs> moments in movies, even if they have to be the yeah, sex so movies. anyway, Emma Malibuyo in good position <laughs> on floor. And what I want to say I qu- was asking, saying, you know, when we were previewing this competition, what is her what is Emma's composition going to be like? And how is it going to change from NCAA so that she has elite, an elite D score that's high enough? And I think we saw a very good example of her strategy being work smarter, not tumblier. Yeah. Because on floor, all of her upgrades from her NCAA routine were dance elements yep. to get her up to, she got a 4.9 in qualification of 4.8 in the finals, which is still a low D. She needed kind of some help to get silver with a 12-6, but it proved to be enough. And people yep. with higher Ds who were going for more tumbling scored lower. And that's the, the strategy. And I think a very good blueprint for almost every athlete. Because I think rare is the gymnast right now whose best path to upgrading for the Olympics to try to get a few more tents to get qualification is upgrading tumbling. Yep. Like you need to be Jade. You need to be Ali Raceman. Where you're like, uh, let's add something easy, like a double Arabian. You know, if that's if that's your ability level and that's your mindset, then yes, upgrading tumbling works. But I think that at this point in gymnastics and the code, I think they're the rarity. And for almost everyone, it's like add a passage of dance elements from corner to corner and do try to do a couple leaps. I mean, it helps when you're Emma Malibuyo and you can like do them and they look pretty. Which is Thank rare, but God. you know, it helps. It helps to be Emma Malibuyo. Yes, yes. But I think that's the strategy overall. Yep. And thank God that her, she has coaches who read the code. Like some other coaches finally read the code too, but like, you know, yes. We'll never forget that the split leap that wasn't for poor Leah Finnegan. Thank God. But now mm. she's qualified. They read the rules. Yeah, they figured they, it out. They, got, they learned yeah. their lesson, which is all you can ask of people. Also, choose <laughs> so you guys were expecting her to make her 25th Olympics. Oh, but you she's guys. She's kind of in trouble, Jessica. I know. I don't think it's going to happen. She, she didn't make the vault final. Okay. Well, I will say, even though she did not make the vault final here, she only ranks eighth among people who are eligible in points. It's count three of four best events. She doesn't have to count this one, theoretically, if she has great results at the remaining three. So nothing is decided yet, either on the good good side or the bad side. But yes, um, if you are putting all of your eggs in the Chuso's ninth Olympic basket, <laughs> I would be a little concerned at yep. this point because she did not make the final. Um, top point getter was An Chang Ok, who we As talked about last week. I predicted North Korea North shows Korea. up for vault. North Korea wins yeah. vault. That's what I'm I'm saying. It wasn't the most beautiful Chung ever done. But but huge improvement, though. Huge improvement. And her legs were mostly together, unlike some people who tried the World Cup route. And she stuck it. This is, like, on the list of Chungs. This is not toward the bottom. Right. The, that's the highest compliment I can give. But, like, we've seen some Chungs, and this is not, not toward the bottom of the list. Right. That's the thing. There are beautiful Chungs. And this is like right below those, this but it's serves, not in the dumpster works. fire chunks. It's yeah. a smart. It it works. You're gonna get the scores for it. You hit it. You can you can comfortably do it. I'm not. Yeah. You, she can do this vault. Yeah, it's 
fantastic. I'm so pleased for her. Um, and so, Deepa Karmakar is the other one I want to talk about with Vault. Yes. She's in fifth, which is close, but also is behind Nyack, oh, also of India, one, country, one per country per event. So that's also going to be something to watch. They've got to yeah. make these World Cup cups like this every year. Like I've been saying, like they need to be like, ah, exciting. And that's it. Cause you know, normally they're, well, you eh. can't have the limp, the you Olympics just, every year. Well, you a can't, lot of this you is... can have, they can be a world championships qualifier. Yeah. 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 We have that. With lasers. Um, also, <laughs> it's this just reminds that me. So many people qualify to worlds that the people who make it from the world cups, like, you know, well, that's why we need to have way less people. Not as intense. It's way not less as people at world championships. With worlds. World championships need to be a thing where, like, you are at a world championships level, even though they are much better that way now. But yeah, we need to reduce the number of people at world championships, and then they can have a chance through World Cups and make the World Cups more exciting. Really also, I remember exciting. that Steve Fontaine was doing the naked handstand, and he fell into a lamp and cut his foot. So I don't think he missed the meet, but that's what happened. Just uh, so movie. you know, in the movie, <laughs> anyway. But you guys, New, Ze New Zealand. So you remember the things with New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So. So Georgia what's happening Rose now? Yeah, Georgia Rose Brown, formerly of Australia, now represents New Zealand, leading bars points among you know didn't win, but among the eligible people because there were amazing people on bars, and also Becky Downey fell in the final, but we don't recognize that because she was first in prelims. Um, so if Georgia Rose Brown were to get the bars spot, she would then not need to get the Oceanic Continental spot. And wouldn't it have been nice to have had someone of the gymnastics level of Courtney McGregor competing at the Oceanic Championships to try to also get a spot at the Olympics? And wouldn't it have been nice to not shoot yourself in the foot and completely stupidly make her ineligible for no reason, really? Right. Wouldn't it have been better if you could have courtney mcgregor with a shot i mean we expect this kind of nonsense from australia but not from new zealand <laughs> that's if you want to convince someone from new zealand to do something that is the argument right i would have expected this from australia <laughs> honestly uh australia 20 2023 men's team not having enough people to compete three people on each event, leaving their all-arounder at home. Uh, and by home, I mean doing media because they didn't put them on the team. Disgusting. Anywho, also you mentioned that Becky improving Downey... Improving Jessica's experience at Worlds by being in the media area, yeah. but not improving the Australian team's experience right. at Worlds by not being able to compete. Yeah. Um, and also justifying all of his feelings because every gymnast saw him was like, what happened to you is so wrong. The, and first thing they'd say, no interview, just... Uh, what happened to you so wrong? Okay, we talked about Becky Downey, you mentioned, fell um, in finals. Um, but also, she you know, she won prelims and she got that 5.7 and the 13.9. Now, she can't qualify, so she's not going to take away any of Georgia Rose right. Browns. But we talked Great about Britain this. Britain has qualified a team, so they will pick their team through their selection team. procedures, and I'm sure it won't be controversial at all. So when we talked about who is proving their point to put me on the team Swagometer, this mm -hmm. is why people like... Uh, Becky Downey are going. So this is my question. You know, I was like, you should always compete to win, not compete to be safe mm -hmm. as a team. But is she better going with a easier, more consistent team? Or should she always go balls to the wall? And I think Becky should always do the most difficulty she's possibly capable of hitting in that moment and should always go for it. Because she has to because she hasn't been on the most recent world's teams, she has to displace someone. She has to put herself in there and she has to, you know, always fight for it. Yeah. She's always going to be, she's always in the position where she has to force them to put her on a team at this point in her career. So she's always got to go, for, just go for it. Everything. Yes. The highest score you possibly can go for it because what it what else is there at this point? She has accomplished so much. She doesn't like. I'm sure she yeah. has personal. You know, obviously we know this. Yeah, there was like a whole wanted. documentary about Deanna Hungman about it. <laughs> but she has personal goals. But like she has accomplished so much. She already has so much. Go for it. What 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 are you saving this for? 
Also, we, speaking of Dianne Hong, we rarely see a mistake by uh, the Olympics, except the entire record of Latinina that was wrong for all those years that Uncle Tim at Gymnastics Hyphen History discovered and proved that their statistics about her were wrong and who had the most medals. And that swimmer did not, in fact, beat her record when he thought he did. But anywho, um, besides that mistake... But Never let it go. Um, don't don't listen to Jessica right then, because some of that was right. <laughs> all right, some of it was right, but they were missing one. Um, so it was a world's medal for Latina. Yeah, it was a world's medal. Oh yeah, that's right, the the swimmer. Um, but anyway, the point, you guys, is that um, they made a boo boo with Deanna. For, she was in an article on the Olympic Channel, and they discussed her as a pre a U.S. gymnast, <laughs> Deanna Hong. Never mm -hmm. done gymnastics, except in a CrossFit class, um, which she picked it up very. <laughs> she was like a lacrosse or one of those sticks on a field uh, ball sports is what she played. Just so you know. So, but speaking of things totally unrelated, Levi Young Revivar also competing for the Philippines. Yes. Finished 13th on bars, so didn't make the final, but she is sixth in the point standings. So I would say still in the mix there. There are lots because there are lots of people in front of her who finished well, like Huang of China, like Becky Downey making the final. Great routines, not eligible. Um, there are also multiple people ahead of her from the same countries, and it's only one per country per event. So she's still there's work to do, but I would say she is in this competitively in the mix on bars, depending how future events go because she's up there. Yeah, um, Nina Durwell. Remember, she dislocated her shoulder um, right before World Championships in her home country of Belgium, so she didn't compete, but now she's back. She competed on beam, and she is the top points getter, so she's in a very good position. Looked yeah, she won the beam final. Mm -hmm. Yeah, won beam final. You would not know that she uh, had any injury. Looks like looks great. I think she looks in fantastic. the. If you imagined Belgian floor routines were a leotard, what would it be? It was the leotard Nina was wearing at this competition. <laughs> and you by know, that, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the first thing I thought. I was like, "Yeah, that's if you a... anthropomorphized the uh, the concept of a Belgian floor routine, and we're like, make that a Leo." Chat GPT, basically... what if Belgian floor routines were a leotard? It's this. And it basically, it's a red uh, bottom, and then like a, it almost looks like if you made an owl's an owl an owl that only had one eyeball and made it into the bodice with the flag colors of Belgium. That's what it looks like. It looks good, despite how I've described it. Um, she finished <laughs> just ahead of her teammate. Pinkston. Oh, Erica Pinkston. Yes. Yeah. She had a really good competition. Another thing that could come down to it with the one one per country per event, because two Belgians are first and second on beat. Yep. Eddie Penev, also remember a Bulgarian yes. US gymnast. He did really well. Well enough that I'm talking about him, the men's competition. <laughs> so you know it was significant. <laughs> but yeah, originally the first alternate on floor hit in the final to finish third. So right there, two spots per event, he's in third now. I, You know, Ryu Sung Hyun of South Korea is a favorite and finished first here, but, you know, right in it. That's very exciting. Uh, some college headlines that we're going to keep kind of short this week because we had to discuss uh, the Olympic procedure for seven hours. because it's that We had seven hours of the Olympic procedure. But, very important. you know, with Winter Cup, there's going to be a lot of things to talk about, and I might not get to complain about NQS when it becomes officially active. So I want to make sure I have a chance now to, first of all, establish the drinking game to drink every time Jessica calls it NSQ or RSQ, both of which are wrong. Um, basically how it works is that will take over for the rankings of the college gymnastics, gymnasts, individual and teams. How it works is you use six scores that you uh, achieve during the regular season, at least three have to be away. You drop the high and you average the remaining five. The system dropping the high is designed to protect against that Tennessee meet that we had this year, where you have one really, really high score that maybe isn't representative. You drop that one so it can't skew the scores. Um, on that note, because remember we talked about Ball State getting that 198. I watched Ball State get scored like by the J the level 10 code of points on bars this week. And I was like, it evens out. Cause I was like, Oh, that is, 
not how bars is being scored in the rest of the country, but the other way. You had the you had the fun way, and then you also had the not so fun way. Um, so, but basically, NQS is my frenemy because it is my greatest passion calculating the NQS, and I love it. And also, I don't think it should exist. And both of those things can be true at the same time. Basically, it exists to theme. protect protect the gorgeous but inconsistent because you only have to count half your mates and you get to drop all of the rest of them, which is like my main complaint with it. Because imagine if you did a team final, but instead of three up, three count at Worlds, it was six up, three count. And you dropped half the routines. That's what NQS is. Like it makes so much not matter in a sport where already the wins and losses don't matter. So it's hard to gin up the stakes for your regular everyday meet during the season. So then making half the scores don't count, not count probably doesn't help either. But also I sure love a spreadsheet and I sure love calculating what a team needs to score this week to move up to that NQS echelon. It's my passion. I would be so upset if it ever went away, even though I think it should go away. (laughs) But in NQS news, Oklahoma already before it starts has the second highest NQS of all time in second only to their NQS from last season. And there are six meets left until the elimination meets. My Roman Empire of NQS. Ah, I said it right. Didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Is that no drinking. The French national team is, uh, they've been at World Championship Center training with Simone and everyone, and they went to a college meet. They went to Metroplex. Um, so they, you can go to the French Federation's uh, Instagram and they discuss it and talk about what they saw and I just love that they did this. It's so great for a I, national team to see this. So cool. I want all of the national teams to come to college meets and be like, oh, you can have deductions to stick at really good scores. Like, I don't have to stick and I can still get a 10. I want to do college gymnastics. <laughs> um, I just want, where I really want is the FIG committees to come and be like, oh, gymnastics can be fun? Like this? Mm. Like a party? Yeah. Um, is there oh we do we did ask who had the very best beat jump? And so we got a yes. lot of answers. And before uh-huh. Jim Turnett news, I want to get to the beat jumps. So one the of beat the, jump news. Very the beat important. jump news. So I one person submitted many examples of Horkina's beat jump. So let's watch Horkina's beat jump while um while Spencer reads some of the other entries into the beat best beat jumps that are actually pretty <laughs> and not basic category. Andrea said, I only know of a couple with Utah. Abby Paulson does a sort of a beat jump on beam. Not a good beat jump, so not a good example. I think she tries to do a beat jump before her series. I actually don't think that's intended to be a beat jump. I think she's just getting her rhythm going. Yeah. If it is, it's not meeting the um, requirements of a B jump. But I would say I don't think that that's what she's going for. Um, but this continues. I believe Jalen Gilstrap is doing a B jump on floor in her Bohemian Rhapsody routine. Jalen Gilstrap should always do everything. Yeah, she, whatever she does. Good example. Just she like if you want an example of something, you'll be like, yes, Jalen Gilstrap, show me the pretty example. <laughs> She'll be like, yes, and I'm going to go back to this floor routine that was all pretty from before, and it's, and I'll, and it works. Um, Alexa said two words, Kyla Ross. I mean, obviously her beat jump in NCAA looked like an angel floating perfection as is everything she does. True. Julia said, as someone who is a dance teacher, I think the best beat jump I've seen as of late in the NCAA is Carly Woodard or Reagan Smith. Carly Woodard's is very, was very good. Yeah. Amplitude and toe point at the same time. Almost like that's what you're supposed to do. Sophia says, Natalie Wojcik. Oh yeah. Toe point. Why didn't we think of that? Betsy says, I always think of Pang's beam. Just watched her final one at 2018 NCAA championships. She put the beat jump after the double turn and then straight into a split leap. Love that routine and the show. Yeah. Yes. I think it's, I feel uh, reinforced in that most of the examples we got for, from people who've graduated. Cause I was like, I can't think of great (laughs) beat jumps happening right now in NCAA. So that makes me feel good that it's mostly people who aren't doing it anymore. But yeah. Jim Turnett news, U.S. championships tickets are now on sale. And yes, you guys, everything is like all session because they're like, how are we going to get people to buy these men's tickets? And my answer to that is see Men's Gymnastics Live because Men's Gymnastics Live is amazing and sit by vault or high bar or floor. 
so you can feel and hear the impact. Like it's so amazing to watch live. So um, Kenzo continuing to do his full elite difficulty gymnastics, mm -hmm. Kenzo posted a video of himself doing two different choreographed floor routines to music. And what he said about it is like, why shouldn't you always try things new and develop new skills? Like it's fun. And I was like, Kenzo preaching the adult gymnastics, do gymnastics for fun and health. Uh, like that, that is the mission that that's the message. This is what gymnastics is for. And you know, Japan, like Germany is one of those countries where it's normal for grownups to do gymnastics for health and fitness. Um, speaking of which, there is the NAIGC <clears throat> mm -hmm. World Masters competition is happening. So if you are, um, and it's like they're going by like the real masters level, which they have in other sports, which is basically like 30 plus. So if you're over 30, um, you can join the US, Japan, Germany, and other countries on June 2nd and compete in the NAIGC World Masters. And I highly recommend you guys, if you do adult gymnastics, oh, I accidentally put the video of the guy's pants falling off here. Another man has joined the <laughs> man who departs. Jessica, quote unquote, <laughs> accidentally put in a video of a men's gymnast pants coming off on rings, totally accidentally. Um, you guys, ha these poor men, constantly their pants are falling off this time it was on um rings and thank god he didn't regular rings not swinging rings thank god he didn't continue because he <laughs> he just stopped and dismounted with his pants around his ankles because imagine if he tried to stick and then he couldn't get his you know legs apart to stick because of the pants could be very dangerous i prefer a dismounting Ooh, this this uh the master's level meet, people doing double backs. Don't feel like you have to do a double back though, you guys. Just like enjoy yourself. Don't worry about difficulty, but if you can, like, hey, oh, they have real medals too. Oh, so cool. Um, second thing we have to talk about besides men in the mm -hmm. department of the pants, of pants falling off. <laughs> they need jackets like the SNL, like five time host. I've joined the My Pants Fell Off during gymnastics mm. club. It should be a club of shame, though, honestly. Add that to the list of things you're making, like your <laughs> scrolls. Right. I have a scroll. I have, I need to make a t shirt with the Olympic procedure part about how it's not about all around printed on the back of it, just mm. for you, Spencer. Mm. Thank, you, um, thank you. I need to make the bingo card. So, anyway, um, other things that are happening Medvedev uh, from Israel not compete he didn't compete at the world cup because israel decided not to send any gymnasts from because of safety concerns um follow up from last week when i was describing a shaw on bars and i could not remember shaw's mm. name this is the skill that is a pack where you grab over the low bar and drop into okay. a stalder front stalder a front stalter out of a pack so you go Got over it. the low bar catch and stalter or whatever you want to do you could do a weiler i guess uh, Which is, so that's it's very cool and therefore must be destroyed the, yes the, obviously no one can the fig's motto so shout out to shaw and for doing that pack to outside stalter also the craziest skill ever done on beam just happened and i feel like we might have already talked about but i feel like it's worth talking about again um this dude who's like a parkour -y kind of athlete did a gainer corkscrew off access tucked tucked double full gainer tucked double full was that a double full is that a single full that was a double it's right like one and three quarters <laughs> let me see wait let's watch it one more time and then he does a terrible salute so he's fired after that but let me see <laughs> So he goes, because it is, it's like a, he starts sort of already half twisted. It's very, mm -hmm. I don't know how quite to, this is the nut, the, to, to take off away from the beam and land back on it is insane. But thank God he's not wearing shoes. If he had done that in shoes, but anyway, I'm super impressed by that. That is an off access flip on beam land back in the beam. He lands safely and he does a wolf Kino out of it. 
basically. <laughs> he just keeps turning. <laughs> anyway, very impressive. I don't know that man's name, but hats off to him. And it's ridiculous and insane. So this week, remember, there's no college and cocktails because instead we are going to have a live podcast as soon as we can after women's podium training, which is Friday, 12 ish. Eastern time, 9 a.m. ish Pacific time. And then again, we'll have a live podcast on Saturday, the 24th, right after the women's competition finishes around 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 um, p.m. Pacific on Saturday. Um, and it's live, of course, for Club Gymner members. And um, remember to subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to all the things on the tubes of you, and set everything to automatically download. So if you're traveling, especially, you have your podcast to listen to. Don't want to get stuck in the air or on a train going through the middle of nowhere with Wi-Fi and not be able to listen. Um, and until Friday at from Winter Cup at 12 Eastern 9 a.m. a.m., you guys. Oh my God. Podium training starts at eight. You guys, I have to get up at like six in the morning. It's going to be great. Um, we'll see you then live. Um, and I can't wait to talk to you. You guys, we're going to get to talk about Gabby Douglas. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so, so, so excited. So we'll see you on Friday. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for playing fantasy until Friday. Take up on gay split on rights and we'll see you Friday. Thanks for listening. Do you want to know what goes on on our extra podcast every week or what some people call Gymcastic OnlyFans? Here's a little teaser for you. Welcome to College and Cocktails. It's the behind the scenes show that we do during college season. We choose a meet. We watch it all together as a family. We discuss how terrible the judging is and it makes us all uh, feel better, yeah. you guys. It's a nice or show. Worse. Did anybody see the florida hair injury committed by leanne wong's earrings that's for your giffage no what happened oh uh, i saw leanne's trinity looking at the earring afterward i saw the aftermath but i didn't see what happened yes um okay. yes after, after vault, vault okay. she hugged someone i couldn't see who it was and and the person she hugged was like ow and leanne was like oh and there was an attack it was an mm -hmm. attempted hair assassination there are many dangers in the things that gymnasts put on themselves in order to compete you can have you've had people get their hair ribbons caught in the velcro of the mat and mm -hmm. have it yank their hair we have seen that yes. more than once yes it's very serious i mean nothing will top what's that movie where she gets her braces stuck in the floor if you like what you heard get more by joining club gym nerd at gymcastic.com